Hi there, I'm Vincent Boss and I provide dating and self-improvement advice. And in today's podcast, we're going to be discussing the story of the dumper. So before we get into the podcast, I just want to let you know about my website, dateme.tips. That's www.dateme.tips. Do you need help trying to save your crumbling relationship? Would you like advice on how to try and get your ex back? Or maybe you need an action plan on how to try and get a girlfriend or boyfriend. I provide email coaching on all of these subjects and can help your specific situation. Visit my website, dateme.tips, to find out more details. That's www.dateme.tips. You will also find on my site the books that I've written, my clothing range and other information. Please check your spam and junk folders if you are expecting an email from me. So now let's get back into today's podcast and today we are discussing the story of the dumper. So if you've been dumped, then one of the first things you're going to have to contend with is the new reality that you no longer have a connection with your former partner. And since they are now your ex, you will have a lot of free time to wonder about what they are thinking about, doing and why. It can be very strange, particularly at first, to consider what your ex might be thinking or doing at this very moment and what their plans might be for the future. You all of a sudden have no way of knowing and this is where the problem begins because when we don't know something for sure, when we can only speculate, guess, use past knowledge on our exes, then we begin to fill in the blanks and that can be very damaging because when we are in this position, we are ultimately creating stories. We are creating our own narrative where we are the author. And ultimately, it doesn't matter how long we were together with our ex. It doesn't matter if we discuss this with our friends, family, or even mutual friends of our ex as well. We don't know for sure, okay? You can have all of the opinion you want. You can be thinking, well, I know what they normally do now. I know how they will react. This is how they seem to be changing towards the end of a relationship. I can make this prediction and that prediction. You could be drawing graphs in your mind and painting pictures in your brain. You do not know for sure. There is no 100% guaranteed way to know for sure what your ex is doing. And if you somehow get a hint of what they're doing, maybe you're told something, maybe you see something on social media, you don't know why they're doing it. Okay, and this is what today's podcast is about. It's about telling you and informing you and trying to help you that filling in the blanks can be very damaging. Okay, you do not want to be creating a story or narrative about your ex when you don't know all the facts. And if they are your ex, then you will not know all the facts. You are no longer in a relationship. You can't discuss things with them. You can't reason with them. You can't just contact them and say, oh, I'm just wondering why, why you posted that on social media. Or I just uh, heard a rumour that you, know, you were spotted somewhere. Why was that? You, know, you can't do these things, okay? Firstly, it's creepy if you even try to. And secondly, you are no longer in a relationship. They no longer at this time want to have a connection with you. So you have to respect this. You have to respect that your ex has decided to end the relationship. And this leaves a big gap in your life. It creates all of this time where you can no longer understand why they're doing things. And in most instances, what they're doing anyway. So let's get into the specifics on this. And the first thing we're going to be discussing is when you create a narrative which is often a lot worse than the reality. So in this instance, which a lot of dumpies will have experienced and appreciate, you will be in a position where you start to assume the worst, okay? This is an, a scenario which is very common for everybody and anybody who has been a dumpy. You no longer have access to speak with your ex and you're thinking to yourself, well, you know, it's a Saturday night. What would we normally be doing on a Saturday night? And what will they now be doing on a Saturday night because they are no longer with you? You know, you might have had fantastic plans in the past 
And you might be thinking to yourself, well, are they continuing those fant fantastic plans? Are they continuing them with somebody else who is not me? Are they doing something very different to what we used to do? Did they get fed up? with what we used to do? Are we trying something new? Are we out on the town? All of these types of things will cross your mind. And the truth is that very often your ex is experiencing something a lot more mundane, a lot more boring, a lot more run of the mill, a lot more basic than what you promote in your mind. You might be thinking to yourself, well, I haven't heard from my ex in a month. I always thought they would get back to me quickly. This means they're filling their time. This means they must have a new boyfriend or a new girlfriend. You you will start to believe that you have seen a rumour online suggesting that your ex went to a concert with somebody and that must now be their new partner. And before you know it, they must be getting engaged. And you start to create these things, but you don't know. You don't know if this person really was your ex's new boyfriend or girlfriend. This person could have been a regular platonic friend. It could have been a work colleague. It might not have even been your ex who was spotted. You know, somebody has told you online they've seen your ex out somewhere. Maybe they was mistaken. You don't know. But you create this story. You start to believe that your ex is no longer thinking about you because they are most likely in a relationship which is so serious now marriage bells can't be far away. It's all very worrying and distressing and you start to picture your ex with other people, having intimacy, but interestingly you never picture your ex arguing with this person. You never think to yourself, well my ex was quite an argumentative person. So the likelihood is that if they are dating somebody new, then by now they would have had an argument. By now they would have had a little bit of a fallout. You don't think that. You think it is perfect and you are creating a scenario, you are building a narrative in your mind which is likely to be unrealistic and also very damaging for your mental health. So at this point, I just want to mention my weekly wingman service. I can be your wingman for the week, providing you with bespoke motivational encouragement. This can be to help with your love life as well as ingraining a self-improvement mindset. The course begins with an audio call for us to speak and then moves on to emails. For more details on this service and information on audio coaching, please click the link in the description. So now we are going to move on the other type of narrative, the other type of story that as a dumpy we will often building our mind. And that is the other side of things. So we've just been discussing when you are thinking things which are really bad and, and hurtful for your mindset, when the reality is likely to be a lot more mundane. But we also sometimes think things and create narratives and build stories of things which seem really positive for us and really exciting and something that means your ex is about to contact you, when again, the reality is probably a little less than that. The reality is probably not as fantastic as you are hoping. And although it's important to stay positive, you don't want to be clock watching, okay? And I, say, I suggest, I say that clock watching is when you are constantly thinking about your ex, second guessing them. And in this particular instance, what I'm about to go into, you're saying to yourself, well, these are the signs that my ex is about to get in touch. So if I just kind of wait around, it will happen very soon. And this is when you create scenarios in your mind, generally based on things such as social media, where you really boost the likelihood of them being about yourself when they really aren't. So a classic one of these is when your ex posts a photo online or maybe they change a profile photo or maybe they delete some pictures but not others and you build a story in your mind as for why they have done it. Okay, you say to yourself, well, I took that photo and that photo is the only one she didn't delete. So what does that mean? Does that mean that she still loves me? Does that mean that he is about to get in touch with me? You know, you don't know whether your ex-girlfriend or your ex-boyfriend is about to get in touch. And sometimes we try to build this up to a peak when there is actually very little evidence. You know, you might see your ex discussing about how they are loving spending time with their dog. And you think to yourself, well, I'm the one who paid for that dog. You know, I paid for that dog. They're loving spending time with that dog. So does that mean 
that they're now thinking about me and are about to reach out. And unfortunately, the situation is likely they're not even thinking about you in this context. Okay, this doesn't mean they're not going to reach out to you, but what it does mean is that you are building a situation, you're creating a narrative, you are writing a story in your mind where you are the main fixation of their thoughts. And the likelihood is you're not. The likelihood is they have posted that photo because they like it, not because you took it. It is a situation where they are discussing their dog because they love the dog. They are not thinking that you bought it. These types of things can really stretch in a whole manner of ways. Maybe you find out that your ex is going to be going on holiday to a place that you enjoy together and you're thinking, well, it must be a sign. Well, not necessarily. It might just be that your ex enjoyed going to that place, okay? I'm not trying to say to you, your ex won't get in touch. If you do everything right, you stand a fantastic chance of one day them doing so. But what I am saying is please temper your expectations and don't read things which aren't true, okay? Just don't read into them as much as some of you are, and we've all been there. Any dumpy will try to grasp at things which aren't really there, and that lies the problem. Because when we create stories and when we build narratives, we generally put them in one of two camps, one of two categories, either very, very beneficial for ourselves or very, very negative for ourselves. The truth and the reality is generally somewhere in the middle, and that is where we need to be. We need to do our best to stop filling in the blanks of the stories and use this time instead to go through self-improvement, okay? Improve yourself and don't clock watch. Because if you're watching the time, if you're thinking to yourself, what is my ex doing right now? I want to know why they're doing this. Or if you're thinking to yourself, well, the signs are clearly here. My ex will be contacting me soon. I'm just going to sit back and not do anything and wait. You need to be going through self-improvement. You need to be pushing forward with your life. And if you do those things, you are actually increasing the chance of one day your ex getting in touch, whilst also protecting your mental health. If you feel this podcast has helped you, then please consider buying me a coffee. The link to do so is in the description. Yeah, if you miss your ex, we can help with that. Help you get them back, or we can help find you someone else. Yeah, yeah, Vincent Bo, the relationship coach. Uh, giving you some insight, bringing you a new approach. Date me that tips. Go and check the site. Uh, giving you advice, helping with your love life. Get your ex back, or move to the next. Ain't no sweat, you know Vincent Bo got you. Finding love ain't no problem. Yeah, date me that tips. Check it out now.